we are building the final assembly. Now it's time for us to finish up the assembly for the drivetrain. What we're going to have is two of our completed drive rail assemblies that you've done through the steps going, getting up to this point. We're going to need to continue to use our tools that we've been using before, so our 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, our 5.5 millimeter nut driver, our 5.5 millimeter crescent wrench. For this step as well, from things that we haven't had previously, we're going to need to get back those two Omni wheels that we took off when we were doing our drive rail assemblies bring in four of our grip wheels, as well as we have some shaft collars, two of our short through bore bearings and four of the long through bore bearings. We're gonna use those for mounting these wheels and then making sure that we get good spacing off of there. And then also a thing that we've done before uh, is we have 12 of these preloaded brackets. So we highly recommend that you preload your brackets, especially when you're gonna be using the extrusion slots on here. So we've taken the time to put these things together um, and now we're kind of ready to go ahead and do our final assembly. First thing we're gonna wanna do though is there's a lot of stuff in here. We're gonna wanna move some of these things away so we're able to get back and ready to build. So let's start moving some of this stuff. All right, now that we have ourselves some space, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to put some of our preformed brackets onto the drive rail itself. So we're gonna be looking at this end of the drive rail uh, and we're gonna to wanna to start by feeding in a couple of these brackets here. One thing that's usually a really, really helpful and handy trick is to be able to have either a piece of piece of channel or a piece of extrusion uh, that you're able to kind of feed uh, in here. So we're going to be putting uh, extrusion pieces along the back of this channel eventually, um, but since they both have a 15 millimeter profile, you can kind of substitute one for the other. This way you're able to know that these uh, L brackets, the, the 90 degree brackets, are placed in the right location. Uh, so when you go ahead and tighten these guys down, you don't really have to do nearly as much adjusting later on during the final assembly. So we're going to just get these uh, tightened in place here. And we're going to want to remove this piece of channel. And then we're going to want to flip this over so we're able to go ahead and do the same thing again. One of the nice things about the extrusion uh, slots is that you, they are infinitely adjustable, so it does make it relatively easy for you to be able to change these if you do get the measurements, if you do get the spacing just a little bit off. But what we're gonna go ahead is we're gonna redo this one more time here. Uh, this time though, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna grab one of our pieces of extrusion to work with here. Wiggle that into these holes here, and then we line that up, and then we can just tighten these down. Now that that's complete, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set that aside. We are ready to go ahead and put on two more pieces that we're gonna put for the middle frame to be able to have our connecting piece of C-channel to help add a little bit more rigidity to the structure itself. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is take two more of these brackets and slide them down and have them facing towards the motor itself. Now, the we're gonna flip this one over and get this one down here. Now, the exact location of this is not really all that important and is kind of dependent upon your design. So we like having an open front on your drivetrains themselves so that you're able to have an, a manipulator or an intake for game pieces uh, can exist in that space. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we wanna line this up roughly right now, we're gonna say we're gonna wanna have it roughly where this whole slot is. This way we're able to just make this easier to duplicate onto our other side, but we can adjust this a little bit later. And we're gonna do this between these two shaft collars to give us a little bit more space to be able to push it forward if we need to uh, for some reason. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of line those up a little bit. And then we're just gonna tighten these in a bit, not too much, cause we want them to stay put. We want them to be a little bit snug. Um, we want them to stay put, but we also wanna be able to easily be able to adjust this later. So we're gonna flip this one over as well and do the same thing. 
now we end up having this all set up and connected, uh, we're now able to go ahead and put in our piece of channel to bridge the two together. Now we're gonna go ahead and just kind of take this and kind of wiggle that in place. What you might need to do is use the nut driver itself um, to help to kind of move the hex head around so that you're able to kind of get this wiggled in place and ready to go. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you abut the end of the C-channel up to the end of this C-channel so this is completely flush, and then you can go ahead and tighten this down and in place. You wanna flip this one over and do the same thing on the bottom. Once you end up having this secure, what you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of set this aside and bring in your other, uh, your other drive rail here. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing that you did with the back of this drive rail to the back of this drive rail. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and then add in these brackets. Oops. Again, having a piece of extrusion is kind of helpful for you to be able to Make sure that this is going to kind of fit on there the way that you want it to. And then you just kind of want to tighten in place. Over and then repeat that task one more time. Now that we have these in place, it is now time for us to get our last two preloaded brackets in place to be able to connect these two halves together. So what we're gonna wanna do again is we're gonna wanna slide these down the front. And we wanna make sure that we put these in the same location as we have them on the other one. So we have these in the next full bearing slot down and we have them aligned with the top line here so we're going to go ahead and get those kind of lined up a little bit here and we're just going to kind of we're going to set these down in place just a little bit just to make it a little bit more harder for them to move but still have a little have just a little bit of resistance so they don't free move but that we're able to kind of slide them to adjust this a little bit later um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing on the other side here Now that we have these two brackets in place, we're able to flip this over and get this to mesh in with this other piece of channel here. Again, you may need to use your nut driver or a wrench to be able to kind of move the hex head of the, of the screw to be able to get it to seat properly in the channel. We want to confirm that we have this lined up where we have it on the other one. And then we can tighten this down. Now, once we have these brackets tightened down, the next step that we have to do is we have to add the back cross members. So that's when we're going to need both pieces of 15 millimeter extrusion uh, to be able to slide these through and in. So we kind of take the first one, you're going to want to kind of work that in here. Now, what you're going to want to do is an important step here is to kind of make sure that the distance between the ends of these 90 degree brackets is relatively the same. So making sure that it's pretty close to being equal. And then once you are, you're able to go ahead and just take your nut driver and connect this end in. Once you get the top bar in, you're going to want to go ahead and flip 
the chassis over, so then you're able to go ahead and put in the remaining extrusion bar. Then we line those both, both up, and then we just tighten these down. Now this is also a good time for you to kind of go through and check your brackets to see which ones, if any of them, are loose. So it looks like a couple of these uh, nuts with the bolts are a little loose here. So we're going to want to kind of go through and just tighten those down while you're kind of in this step because from here, this point forward, really all we have left to do is put on our wheels. So we just want to make sure that everything with the structure and the frame itself is all very sturdy. So we're pretty good here. Those all look good. We can flip this over and do one more quick spot check on this end with these brackets that we just put in. Looks like we have one here that could go a little bit tighter, but once that's kind of snug in there, there we go. Those are all snug and we are all set with the chassis. Now it is time for us to put on our wheels, so we're going to need to get ourselves some shaft collars, the short and through bore bearings that we set aside earlier, as well as the wheels themselves. So we use the long through bore bearings. You're going to basically put those on first on the front two. We use these with the grip wheels to be able to provide spacing basically off of the frame. It's important for you to notice that the flange of this bearing is actually sitting flush against the channel itself. This is basically to help make it where the shafts are going to stay constrained and in place uh, while the robot is running. And it also gives us that nice, as I said earlier, standoff from the channel itself for the wheels. So we put those ones on, and then next we're going to take our short through bore bearings, which are the ones that we utilized for the Omni wheels. So we're going to go ahead and put one here and put another one on here. Next we want to go ahead and just put our wheels on themselves, so we're going to just go and pop up one side here. We'll get our grip wheels on the front here. and then our Omni wheels on the back. And then what we can do is just go ahead and we can add in our shaft collars for us to be able to tighten our wheels in place. One of the nice things about this drivetrain is that the orientation of the wheels, you can flip them around and change them if you wish. Um, so you can put the Omni up front instead of in the back. Uh, you can also add an Omni up front, uh, Omni wheels up front. You can double up. There's enough space on the shaft here for you to be able to add another Omni wheel um, if you so choose. Um, so once we get these uh, all set, once we get these all set, we're just going to want to go ahead and take our Allen wrench and just tighten down all of our shaft collars. Once your shaft collars are tightened and the wheels are all set, the channel drivetrain is complete. You're ready to go ahead and add yourself a control system to this, uh, maybe a few manipulators and get yourself ready for the competition. Good luck with your season, and we hope to see you out there.